When you are a furniture refinisher, every piece you acquire has its own unique challenges. After bringing home this Crawlier Buffet Hutch, my initial thought was to sell the buffet alone and perhaps repurpose the top somehow. People just use furniture differently these days. It's been my experience that most people want the bottom parts of these combos and not the top parts so much. My dilemma now was separately or uh, go with my gut and keep it together. The piece itself was structurally solid in really sound condition. Aesthetically, it was another story. It needed quite a bit of work. The thing about refinishing two pieces of furniture that are part of a set, like a buffet and hutch, is that often selling them separately will make you more money. If you sell them as one piece, you've put in double the time because it's taking you just twice as long to do the bottom and the top and you don't often get double your money when you sell it as one unit. When you separate them and sell the buffet as a standalone and then perhaps make, an, I don't know, a bookcase or something out of the top piece, you can charge more money for the individual pieces. So that's always a consideration to think about when you're trying to make money from, you know, repurposing furniture and selling it.
Now that the bottom part is sanded, repaired and stained, I moved on to the hutch part. Doors with glass always add a degree of difficulty because you really don't want to have to replace them. And these doors had some pretty nice etched lines around the inside, so I was really careful not to break them. I love the finish inside the hutch as is. It was in pretty good shape. I cleaned it, then at the end waxed it for a bit of protection and shine. The exterior of the hutch needed more attention. I had to go through the whole regime of removing the existing finish, sanding, staining, and then top coating.
just when I was ready to put the door back on, I found out that there's half a screw left in one of the holes, so my hinge is not going on properly. So now I'm gonna have to get that piece of screw out. Ugh. How I solved this problem is I chiseled out a small square so I was able to get access to the screw. Then I used a carving tool and needle nose pliers to remove the piece of screw that was left inside the hole. I have video footage of this, but it's really out of focus, so I decided not to include it. After the screw was removed, I had a square piece of dowel just laying around from some other project that happened to fit perfectly in the uh, little square hole that I made uh, with the chisels and I just glued it in and I had no problems after that with the hinge attaching and working perfectly. Okay, it is now that time to take a quick look at where this all started from and if you like this kind of content, please consider subscribing to my channel by tapping on the subscribe button below. I never thought I'd be sitting at almost 750 subscribers after only three videos and it's thanks to all you guys. So a big thank you for watching this all the way through and see you the next time.